Welcome to the second concert of the World Championship Old Time Piano Playing Contest. We have a really wonderful lineup of performers for you tonight. We have Brian Holland, Julie McClary, Marty Mincer, Bill Edwards, Ethan Uslan, all the way from France, Jean-Baptiste Franck. I'm Bill McNally. I'll be your host. And we are so glad you could join us. Hi there. Uh, so good to see you live. We can see you right now. And no, that's not really true. This concert has been, in fact, pre-recorded. But hey... Uh, we're here with you now, we're live with you now, and we're happy that you're here with us. Okay, so by now you've probably noticed that there's a banner at the bottom of the screen for you to click on. Yes, we are taking donations, and yes, ladies and gentlemen, the money part of this is important. We really want to ensure that there is a future to the World Championship Old Time Piano Playing Contest, and we want you to be a part of that. So, just one little click right here, no amount is too small. Uh, we hope you'll all chip in, and we really hope you'll enjoy the concert. So, here's Bill Edwards. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, those who are watching now, those who watched this in the past, those who will be watching in the future, I think that covers everybody. Well, hello. My name is Bill Edwards, also known as Professor Bill in the ragtime biz, so to speak. I have been involved with ragtime in some way since I was around six years old and started learning tunes like Yes Sir, That's My Baby, Pastime Rag Number 3, The Entertainer, and so on. And that's when I was knee high to a knee back in the ninth, a while ago. Anyhow, I have been involved with the World Championship of Old Time Piano Playing since 1987, believe it or else, and actually won the thing in 1991. I've done fairly well, I have quite a few medals and trophies, but it's not about that. It's about all the fantastic people that I have met there over the years, both those who come to listen, and we need you, and the contestants as well. I've had chances to mentor young kids in this, and there's this, and old kids, actually. So much to this. Some of the uh, champions were kids when I met, when they were uh, 13, 14, 15 years old, and I always told them, don't get better than me, what they do. What you gonna do? Anyhow, for our offering this July, I am going to bring you an old, old saw. Of course, everything written before 1939 might be regarded as old now. But this is The Great Maple Leaf Rag by Scott Joplin from 1899. And I have just a few alterations in it, just, just a couple here and there. I don't think anyone will object, right? After all, we're supposed to make it fancy for this competition. I'm not competing right now. Not that I am, but enjoy the Maple Leaf Rag.
You know, Maple Leaf Rag. It seems only right to begin an old time music concert with Maple Leaf Rag. No matter how many times we've heard it, it's still just about the best thing in ragtime and it never gets old or stale. The ragtime performers I know, every single one of them, they agree on this point. Even if we hardly agree about much else, we can just keep listening to Maple Leaf Rag. And okay, by the way, yes, we, we agree about a lot of things, just not everything. Anyhow, one of the earliest composers of ragtime music was a man named Carrie Mills, who was born in Philadelphia and established a publishing house in New York City. Uh, here's Marty Mincer to play some of his music for you. Marty. All right, now we're going to do Red Wing. Now this version of Red Wing is not considered an authentic version, it's considered a modest artistic liberty version. And uh, it's not approved of by the classic ragtime players, and, and most especially not approved of by my grandmother, but she's not here tonight to listen to it. So this is Carrie Mel's Red Wing with modest artistic liberty. <laughs> Marty Mincer. Bravo. Thank you, Marty. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to once again draw your attention to the button at the bottom of the screen here. Uh, if you haven't already made a contribution, we would really, really appreciate any donation you would make. Uh, just as a reminder, all proceeds from this concert are going to be split evenly between the performers and the contest. So once again, there's the button. Give it a click. We'd really appreciate that. Moving on, one of the things that's really, really amazing about classic rags is that despite a really narrow form, a really precise musical language, they, they have this ability to speak to such a wide variety of human feelings, as many as there are feelings. Uh, the next piece by Scott Joplin is one of ragtime's most tender, and it's just absolutely one of the great masterpieces of Scott Joplin. Brian Holland. Hello everyone. My name is Brian Holland. 
and uh, I am thrilled to be a part of this online streaming concert uh, that's being presented by the Old Time Music Preservation Association. Uh, I've been involved with that group since 1992 in some capacity. Uh, that was the first year that I entered the World Championship Old Time Piano Playing Contest. And uh, I entered several years before I finally won in 1997, uh, and I was a three-time champion, 97, 98, 99. Uh, I retired and uh, then I went, went on to uh, judge several times uh, since then, and it's always been an absolute pleasure uh, and an honor to be part of anything that UPA does. So I also want to make, I take a moment to thank William McNally, uh, Ted Lehman, and Ian Hominick for being a, a central part of what we're doing right now. Uh, during this wonderful, horrible time <laughs> of COVID uh, in 2020. And uh, it's great because it, it gives the uh, musicians a chance to kind of spread their wings and try some new things. And I think this is definitely a new forum for most of us. Uh, and so I'm thrilled to be a part of it. So um, I'm going to start off by playing um, a piece actually that I could not have played in the contest uh, when I was in it, mainly because it's a medley. And it includes a tune that is uh, post-1929. So this is a, a, a wonderful piece that was arranged by a great musician named Mark Allen Jones out of Carmel, California. Uh, he took Scott Joplin's uh, Solace from 1909 and combined it uh, wonderfully with uh, Roy Orbison's Blue Bayou from 1963. And so you put them together and you have this Solace in the Blue Bayou.
Wow, beautiful. Thank you, Brian. Uh, you know, Solus, it's just such a masterpiece. You know, by itself, it would have cemented the legacy of Scott Joplin, and yet it was just one piece in this amazing catalog of works that Joplin composed. So really, my, my hat's off to one of the great geniuses of American music. We're going to move on now uh, and pause our exploration of classic rags and go over to Bill Edwards, who is going to guide us in a medley of songs for the armed forces. Traditionally, we hold our concert on Memorial Day weekend and cap the, uh, the contest with a celebration of the armed forces. And this is you know, a particularly special time for the armed forces. Uh, they have given so much to our country. And no matter where you stand on the views and issues of the day, we can all get behind them. They have been giving so much to our country. And if you or a loved one is in the armed forces, we send you our most sincere thanks. So. Uh, we will follow Bill Edwards' performance with Julie McClary playing Stars and Stripes Forever. And now let me turn it back over to Bill. Well, hello, it's me again. And at this point in the... Pr what? Too much? Really? It's... it's. Oh. Too shiny? Too much. Everybody's a critic. Well, it's me again. Going back to the late 1980s, I used to be one of the hosts or co-hosts on at least a dozen occasions of the brunch that was held at the end of the contest on Monday morning. We call it the Red, White, and Blue Memorial Day brunch. And in doing so, not only was I providing entertainment in the morning, I got to do this fantastic Armed Forces medley. I always liked doing that because everybody in the room when their Armed Force song came up, they could stand and we could recognize them. It was great. Well, we're now in a time of social distancing, and I had thought about, what if we do a big Zoom meeting? But most of you won't have screens big enough to have 80, 90 people on there. So we're just going to take your word for it that when, if you were in the services, that we honor you when you stand up. So we're just going to believe that whoever you are, you stood up during this time, even though we're not in the room with you, but our heart is with you. I uh, should know that those of you who met my dad, Sam Edwards, who died in 2004, well, before that time, he came to a few of these competitions. He was a radio and television star, and he actually did some stuff on stage. Well, behind me, that's the flag we received upon his death in 2004, but in many ways, 16 years, he is still with us. So glad to have him over my shoulder. So, if you're ready to start up your, I don't know, bayonets, uh, tanks, whatever, here we go, the Armed Forces Medley. The tune that you don't recognize will probably be the one for the Coast Guard, but please recognize it anyhow. I've added on two things at the end, one for me and one for everybody. Here we go. Sing 
down in flames. Nothing will stop the U.S. Air Force. We're always ready for the call. We place our trust in thee. Through howling gale and shot and shell. To win our victory. Semper Paratus is our guide. Our pledge, our motto too. We're always ready to or die. Oh, Coast Guard, we fight for you. And your battle stations. Anchors away, my boys. Anchors away. Sets my brain a reeling every time I hear the music of a military band. Any yank, a Yankee Doodle simply sets me off my noodle. It's that patriotic something that no one can understand. Here's a land with a million soldiers. That if we should need them, we'll fight for freedom. Hurrah, hurrah for every Yankee tar and old GAR. Every stripe, every star. Red, white, and blue. You're a grand old flag oh, You're a grand old flag And a high-flying flag And forever in peace may the way You're the emblem of the land I love The home of the free and the brave Every heart beats true For the red, white, and blue Where there's never a boast or brag And you're all the thought it was a little bit too somber and he pulled it the next day and it sat in a chest can you imagine for 20 years and then in 1938 he pulled it out again and at a special ceremony late in the year he had Kate Smith the famous radio singer introduce the song God bless
Returning with one last classic rag on tonight's program, Scott Joplin's magnetic rag remains a, a personal favorite to me. Uh, it was the last rag he wrote in 1914, just a few short years before he died in New York, and the piece has always seemed to me to be the story of the classic rag writer finding his place in New York. The form of this one is unusual, four different strains in succession before finally coming back to that opening strain, and each strain tells a story. In the first, there is the voice of Joplin, the elegant composer of classic rags. In the second, we hear the sounds of Yiddish midtown New York City. That's right about where Joplin lived when he first moved to New York. Uh, in the third strain, we hear blues. It's a 24-measure strain instead of the traditional ragtime 16-measure strain. And there's a bass line that's evocative of the evolving Harlem piano styles. And there are even blue notes in there. The fourth strain is just pain and struggle. Uh, maybe it's where Joplin seeks to find his role in a New York musical culture that has moved past his ragtime style. It's one of Joplin's most searching efforts, and he resolves it all by returning to where he began, speaking the language of classic ragtime, the greatest composer of America's uh, first truly unique musical style, Scott Joplin's Magnetic Rag.
For the next couple of pieces, I'm going to be turning the reins over to Ethan Uslan, who really has a special knack for turning classical pieces into syncopated gems. We call that ragging the classics. Uh, the first time I ever heard Ethan, he was playing a piece that he called Chopin's Knocked Urn. And today I think he's going to be reaching even further back than Chopin to the music of Beethoven and Mozart. Ethan Uslan, everyone. Well, hello there. My name is Ethan Uslan. Thanks for tuning in to this virtual concert. This is my home in Charlotte, North Carolina. And I suppose many of you have been wondering what I've been up to the last couple months. Well, I've been doing a lot of traveling, actually. I've been to the dining room, the living room, the garage, the backyard. I've been in the bathroom uh, so many times I've lost count. Uh, it's been an exciting couple months. And uh, now I'd like to play some piano for you. Uh, here's some classical music. I'd like to play some Mozart. Um, the famous Turkish march. Of course, I will play that with some subtle ragtime variations. And then I will do the same to Beethoven's famous Fur Elise, which is German for For Elise. You're welcome. Okay, so uh, here we go. A little Mozart, then a little Beethoven.
okay, so every piano teacher I think I've ever had is shaking their head. You know, whether they're living or dead, they're shaking their heads and rolling their eyes. And thank you, Ethan, that was fantastic. Uh, you know, ragging the classics is something I particularly love. Uh, as a classical pianist, I sometimes think about Stravinsky and how he would rag the classics. And in 2003, pianist and composer David Forzeig wrote the best titled work of ragtime ragging the classics that I know of. He called it Stride Right. It is his take on Stravinsky's Rite of Spring, and I got to record that. And David, if you're tuned into this, hi, thank you so much for sharing that with me. That was really one of the, you know, my favorite pieces that I've ever worked on in ragtime. Anyhow, we're going to change gears a little bit. We're going to move over to some stride playing. Um, Donald Lambert was one of the great stride pianists that, you know, he came a bit after the ragtime era, uh, but he had such great respect for ragtime piano and for specifically classic rags. And he also had enormous respect for the great masterpieces of European composers. And he also would rag a lot of classics. Uh, one of our recent winners, Jean-Baptiste Franck, has a real passion for the style of Donald Lambert. And he's coming to you all the way from France, which of course is a lot easier to do online than it is in person. Uh, but he's going to be playing a, a Donald Lambert arrangement among other things. Please welcome Jean-Baptiste Franck. Hello everyone, I'm going to play Elegy, composed by Massenet.
now I'm going to play a medley of the tune I composed, followed by Servio Soro and Somewhere Over the Rainbow.
Okay, everybody, it's intermission for 10 seconds. If you haven't made a donation by now, remember this button right here. Uh, this is the time to do so. Okay, ready, get set, go. See, that's all it took. Thank you so much for contributing. We're glad to have you along with us. Please welcome back to our stage, Brian Waller. I mean, Brian Holland playing Fats Waller right now. Brian Holland. So next up is, uh, frankly, another tune that I could not have done in the contest at the time that I was in it because at the time uh, they cut off pieces, uh, anything prior to 1929. Now this tune would be allowed today because as I understand it, the rules have been amended a little bit and they allow tunes up to 1939. And uh, this one was written in 1938. And it was written by my favorite composer, uh, my favorite uh, personality really of the 20th century, uh, a gentleman named Thomas Fatzwaller. And this is one of those tunes that is not uh, as heard, heard as much as his uh, standard stuff. It's a great stride tune uh, that I picked up on a recording by Dick Hyman uh, and fell in love with it. And, uh, well, I hope you enjoy it as well. This is a beautiful tune, great stride piece called Bach Up To Me. You know, I just can't stop smiling and tapping my toes. Thank you, Brian. Thank you so much for joining us. And uh, let's, let's turn back to Julie McClary one more time. And it turns out that ragging the classics, ragging the classical pieces, that's not the only thing you can rag. Julie is going to do a ragtime rendition of a gospel hit. And it's good proof that any music can be turned into ragtime music. Julie McClary. written in 1899 by Lewis Jones. It's called There's Power in the Blood. <laughs> Thank you. 
You know, so much of this great music has its roots in the European march style. That's what John Philip Sousa was writing when he penned some of America's most recognizable patriotic marches, and what much of James Reese Europe and his band was often performing with his all-black military band in France during the First World War. One of the most popular pieces of that time was a piece called Repas Band. But there's a bit of history to this one. We aren't sure who actually composed it, Harry J. Lincoln or Charles Sweeley. Uh, it's just a reminder of how competitive it has always been to be a musician. Please welcome back Marty Mincer. Hello, I'm Marty Mincer here to share with you a little bit of old time piano. We're going to start with Repa's Band. This was released in 1901 and attributed to a gentleman named Charles Sweeley. Repa's Band. <laughs> To close our concert, I'm reaching back to one of America's first truly unique musical voices. Uh, Louis Moreau Gottschalk was born on the Louisiana Bayou, uh, the son of a countess who had escaped the Haitian slave revolt, and uh, a Jewish banker from London. Uh, he began piano lessons at the age of three, and by the time he uh, was growing up, he was living in the French Quarter of New Orleans. So growing up in the French Quarter in the 1830s and 40s meant that every day he was hearing the songs of African-American spirituals and songs and rhythms that were being brought still uh, right from Africa. So he was hearing this very uh, exotic mix of musical sounds. 
And long before ragtime, long before the Czech composer Antonin Dvorak told America that it needed to look to black music in order to find its own musical voice, Gottschalk wrote music that mixed the syncopated sounds he heard from those slaves with the, the more refined European styles of Chopin and Liszt. And it was the first music written by anyone that really showcases a truly American sound. And Gottschalk was also an ardent supporter of the Union in the American Civil War, and he dedicated this next piece to General George McClellan. Uh, and eventually he was able to perform this piece for Abraham Lincoln. So this is Louis Moreau Gottschalk's Union.
Thank you all so much one more time for joining us this evening. Uh, stay safe, and here's to the United States of America. Uh, we look forward to sharing more concerts with you in the future, and good night.